contouring and bronzing together, you get bronzering. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Like I mentioned in my previous video where I was just giving you guys some general life advice as well as some advice to those of you who are aspiring makeup artists, I did plan ahead and film myself doing this look because I figured you guys might love it. So I planned ahead and recorded it with the idea of creating a tutorial for it. So if you guys loved that look and want to see how I create it, keep on watching. I'm going to start this look by doing the eyes first. So I'm just going to go ahead and prep them by applying a little foundation to the lids. I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy Plus Smooth Foundation. And I'm just applying a little first using the Sigma F75 brush and then blending it out with a beauty blender. Don't worry about it creasing. I'm going to go ahead and set with powder to prevent any of that from happening and just really lock in that foundation. The powder I'm using to set that foundation with is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in the shade Light Plus. And the number on this Sigma brush has come off at this point, so I'll make sure to include that in the description box below. Next, I'm going to fill in my brows using the Anastasia Brow Powder Duo in Chocolate, and I'm going to apply it using Bedellum Tools 735. Instead of mixing the two shades like I normally do, this time I'm going to take the lighter side and apply that towards the inner part of my brow, and then use the darker side for the tail end. The shadows I'm going to be using for today's look are from the Anastasia Shadow Couture Palette. The first shadow I'm going to be using is Soft Peach, and I'm going to apply that to my crease using Smith Brush 232. Using that same brush, I'm now going to take the shadow Morocco and apply it to the inner and outer corner of my eye, and then softly blend it out towards the center of my crease. The look I'm trying to go for is a spotlight eye where we're going to have a little pop of sparkle in the middle of the lid. Next, I'm going to take the shadow Intense Gaze and Smith Brush 253. This brush is key for this next part because of the fact that it's so tapered and comes into a little point at the end. Because we're going to take that shadow and lightly feather it in where we applied Morocco, but start feathering it in towards the center of the eye, but still leave that spot right in the center with no eyeshadow. And finally, to fill in that blank space in the middle, I'm going to take the shadow Bellini and I'm going to apply it using Smith Brush 247. You can also take that same shadow and brush and apply it to the inner corner for a really nice highlight for the tear duct. Now that I'm done applying all the shadow, I'm just going to go back in and apply a little more of the shadow Morocco towards the inner and outer corner to really intensify the look of that center spotlight. And to be a little more precise, I'm using Smith Brush 230. For this type of look, you don't want to blend too intensely because you don't want to ruin that center highlight. So instead, I'm just going to blend around the outer edges of the eye to smoke out the shadow a little more. And I'm going to do that using Sigma Brush E40. And of course, my camera wasn't even recording when I was applying my false lashes. I'm such a rookie. But I'm going to quickly run through what I did to apply the false lashes because we're not wearing any liner for this look and it's really hard to conceal the band of false lashes when you don't have any liner on. My trick for this is that I use the black duo glue and I cut the lashes in half to make the application easier and then I, I apply the falsies directly to the lashes. So I'm not applying them to the skin, I'm putting them at the base of the lashes to make sure that they look really natural from top. So, as you guys can see, I don't know if the camera will pick up on it. It's not so obvious where the lashes start. And cutting them in half really helped and using that black glue it just kind of blends in with the base of the lashes. While I wait for that glue to dry, I'm just going to go ahead and work on the complexion. For a primer, I'm using the NARS Oil Free Pore Refining Primer. And I'm mostly going to apply the primer in areas where I tend to get oily. 
I'm going to be using the Maybelline Fit Me Dewy Plus Smooth Foundation, the same one I used to prep my eyes with. I'm also going to mix in my favorite skin illuminator, and that's the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Opal, into my foundation before applying it to my face using my Beauty Blender. And I'm just using this brush to mix the illuminator in with the foundation. I take whatever's left over and apply it to my skin, and then I'll go in directly with the Beauty Blender for the rest. And I'm mixing two different shades of the Maybelline foundation. I'm using shade 125 Nude Beige and shade 220 Natural Beige. I'm more towards just natural beige now, but it still tends to oxidize a little too dark. So if I mix it with the lighter foundation or the one that's a little more pink, it tends to wear better on me all day versus oxidizing to like a really orange color. So those are the two shades of the Maybelline Fit Me foundation that I'm mixing together. And for a concealer, I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Vanilla. This is just one or two shades lighter than my actual skin tone, so it makes for a really nice highlight while concealing all at the same time. And rather than apply it straight from the applicator, I'll apply it to my face using my fingers and then blend it out with the beauty blender. And now I'm just going to set that concealer with the Ben Nye Luxury Powder in Cameo. Now that I have set the concealer with a translucent powder, I'm going to show you guys a little trick to make bronzing and contouring with a powder a lot easier and a lot smoother. So using that same powder I used earlier to set my lids with when I had applied the foundation, that's the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in the shade Light Plus. I'm going to take that powder and I'm going to dust it all over the areas that I'm going to be bronzing slash contouring so that when you go in with the darker powder, they're just going to blend out a lot easier. And the brush I'm using for that is Smith Brush 112, and that's the exact same brush I'm going to use to contour slash bronze with. So I'm just literally just packing it onto those areas. I'm not being really precise with the blending, I'm just patting on that MAC Mineralize Skin Finish powder. And then I can go in with my bronzer. I'm going to be using my NARS Laguna bronzer. So now the bronzer is going on a lot softer and it's blending a lot easier versus putting it right on top of a cream product like your foundation. Same thing goes for when you're done bronzing or contouring. If it ends up looking too splotchy or too dark in some areas, just pick up some powder and blend it out. For a highlight, I'm using my favorite highlighter ever since the day it arrived on my doorstep and that's the Jaclyn Hill Becca Cosmetics Champagne Pop. So I'm just going to apply that to the high points of my face but a little more generously because I want to give myself that glow and I'm going to be using the Sigma Brush F55 to do that. I've been loving this brush from Sigma to apply my Champagne Pop because I don't know if you guys have played with any of the shimmering skin perfectors from Becca in the pressed form. They are very finely milled and really fluffy, so as soon as you dip your brush into it, you end up picking up a lot of product. And because this is a dual fiber brush, I find that it doesn't pick up as much and it allows me to blend it out throughout my entire face really effortlessly and without putting on too much of it. I don't know if you guys have noticed from any of my makeup looks that I do on Instagram or that I've done for my tutorials on YouTube, I don't like a lot of blush. I'm just not a blush girl. I just like my blush to be really soft and subtle and more towards the beigey side. So for today's look, I'm using this new blush I got from NARS. It's a part of the Christopher King collection that came out a while ago and it's called Silent Nude. Some of you guys are probably looking at it like that's not even a blush color, it's so light. But it adds such a subtle little bit of color to your cheeks and then if I want to, I can add a little bit more blush that has a little more color and this one will allow whatever blush I add on top to blend out easily. I'm all about layering if you guys haven't noticed. <laughs> so I'm going to apply this blush using Smith Brush 118. I think another reason why I also like a really soft blush is because I tend to do a lot of dramatic eye looks and I don't like it to look like I have too much if I do a really intense blush. Now that the face is done, I'm just going to finish the eyes by adding a little of a soft peach and Morocco to my lower lash line.
And then using again that MAC Mineralize Skin Finish and the large fluff brush from Sigma, it's the E50 brush. I'm just going to clean up the edges. Before I add my brow gel and my mascara, I'm just going to really quickly spritz my face with Fix Plus. Oh, I almost forgot one step. You guys know I can't go without tight lining, especially when wearing false lashes and having no line on the top. It's just going to fill in that blank space that your waterline creates and make the base of your lashes look really full. So I'm going to go ahead and do that using NARS Larger Than Life Liner in Via Veneto. And now back to the brow gel and mascara. And I'm of course using Anastasia's Clear Brow Gel and for my lower lashes, I'm using CoverGirl Lash Blast Link Mascara in the waterproof form. And there was an eyelash on my upper lip. <laughs> for my lip, I haven't really decided what I want to do yet, so this is going to be a mystery. I'm kind of just making this look up as I go. I really had no intention of doing this look. I just kind of went off the color Intense Gaze from the Shadow Couture palette because someone requested that I do a look using that specific shadow. So let's see what sort of lip I come up with. I went off camera to figure out what lip color I was going to wear because I literally could not make up my mind with this look. So the lip color or the lip combo I came up with is Morocco Lip Liner from NARS and Pigal lipstick and then the gloss in the center that's giving it that little added shine is Gilded Lip Gloss from Anastasia. I don't know, I'm not really feeling it so I'm gonna pick out another color. <laughs> Alright guys, so this is the lip color I'm gonna go with. Still that same NARS Morocco lip pencil. I just love that lip pencil for the fact that it is a brown lip pencil but it has an orange undertone to it so it gives a little subtle pop of color but still is really universal and can go with it many different lip colors and then I of course went with my favorite lip color that I always wear whenever I have a lot of color on the eyes and that's the Anastasia lip gloss in the shade Undress. So that's what I'm going with and I'm sticking with it. And that completes this tutorial. Like I mentioned in my previous video, if you aren't already following me on Instagram, definitely go and check it out. Here is my Instagram name right here. I post daily makeup looks on my Instagram page and most of the time if people love certain looks or request a tutorial for one, it'll make it onto my YouTube. So definitely go and check that out if you want some inspiration on what looks you'd want to see next. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe so I can see you in the next one. Bye guys. Ooh, my nails aren't done.